I'm Mark Baer. Welcome to the Your Town Television Program. My guest is King Grossman, an artist, a writer, a great golfer, <laughs> uh, a man with a new book that we're going to talk about immediately, and uh, my golfing buddy. Yes. <laughs> When's uh, our next round? <laughs> yeah, and, and, and a future host here. Uh, so, so let, let's just uh, talk a little bit about your background. We'll go into the book. Oh, sure. Well, you started with golf, so I'll start with that. When okay. I was eight years old, my dad took me out to the golf course with him, and I remember my first round, I shot 172, uh, and we kept score. And so from there, it's been, uh, you know, a misspent youth, and then on from there, and I love the game and love this area for it. Um, gosh, uh, you know, um, other other interests in my life, you know, I've, I've been in the world of politics. I worked for Lloyd Benson when he was a senator from Texas uh, on Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C., and his staff there. Um, and then uh, been in business. I uh, had a money management company. Uh, and uh, but, but I always knew I was a, a writer at heart, uh, an author. And uh, so I started writing in earnest, uh, oh, uh, gosh, uh, close to 20 years ago now. I always was a writer, but... Uh, but really started writing in earnest about 20 years ago now, and now I'm working on my fourth novel. I have my third one out here, Letters to Alice. Well, let's start with uh, with Letters to Alice. So let me hold up the book. Uh, so, yeah, there we Thank go. You, we can Mark. see it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you, you can't trust it until you see it in the That's monitor. Right. Yeah, uh, yeah. This is an interesting journey. If, if, I, if I may paraphrase, what's going on is, is it's a story of a, a man who's moved from inaction to action, from uh, passivity to activism, to watching the world, to actually trying to make a difference in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've always considered you what I call an artivist. And you, you walk the walk, you talk the talk, you are involved, and uh, the life uh, that your character the, the 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 issues that he's dealt with, you you you've dealt with, and I think the uh, what makes the book so interesting is the is the fact that um, you it, it it is kind of a guide to moving from passivity into action, mm -hmm. and that you've uh, embodied this. Oh, thank you. So uh, it's a book that has a parallel contemporary story. It also has a story that deals with um, uh, Boris Pasternak uh, and uh, issues in the uh, in the Russian Revolution. Yes, in post post revolutionary Russia. Y yes, and uh, the creation of Doctor Zhivago. Yes. Um, yeah. I, I guess to uh, let's just jump in. I'm going to let you just read the introduction, and then we can let's take the just read a bit. From the book. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's just read a bit. And let's just, let it speak for itself. Yes. Um, so just from the start in chapter one, he was a slumbering man, not a sleepwalker or awake, slumbering, eyelids droopy to the world, all its corruption, its death march with violence and bad religion. The corporatocracy pulling all the strings, a non-conspiracy, conspiracy of bloated power. Where things just happened and bombs were dropped and oceans were poisoned and people of the land were pushed off their land and so much more dog reel went down in the name of human progress. Which really meant flowing all the money up to the top until what? Ten rich guys in New York City who weekend in the Hamptons and summer in Aspen have 99% of it. To hell with the planet, to hell with seven billion everybody else's. This great white whale, this Moby Dick, was so big, who was going to stop it? Nobody could turn things around now. And that's why he slumbered purposefully and with exuberant style. That, and he had a job to keep, a family to be a partner in feeding, a reputation that had never been built. To assist him in this endeavor, he had a secret weapon. At all times, the world looked sparkly. Tree branches wore bangles, lights were stars, the sun furry, the moon a giant pearl, branches, uh, the, the moon a giant pearl, and most importantly, people's faces appeared nondescript. Their features flattened like people in a George Surratt painting. At all times, that is, unless he chose to see things clearly. 
But doing that was mostly too angering or depressing, often triggering a one-two punch of both monkeys on the back, so he usually used his secret weapon. At first he thought all those years working as an editor for a third-rate literary agent, pouring through poorly written manuscripts under bad fluorescent light, had stolen something from him. Then, as things kept getting worse, he realized it all had been a gift and ultimately a secret weapon of protection. He sort of fell into this realization, actually. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And, and, uh, and, and, and on it goes. And uh, yeah, so you have been, uh, you, you, you were recently in North Dakota, you've been recently, uh, you've mm -hmm. been involved in, in a, be going to Washington, D.C. next week. Yes. Um, and uh, so you have been in, 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 involved on, on the front lines. And uh, I, I guess one of the things that I thought that was rather profound that um, you've, you've said to me is that everybody doesn't need to be on the front lines, but everybody can find a place for themselves. Right. Uh, in social justice. In, in social justice. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess being an active citizen is what it's, it's, it's about these days. I think so. I think, we're at a, I think we've been at a time where we need to organize a movement to really have a government that's for and by the people. I think we've lost that. And I think we're losing it in, like, spades right now. Just uh, we're, we're going over the edge of government that just does not reset, represent the will of the people. And so, uh, and whether you're right or left, we're, we're no longer talking about, in my view, uh, you know, conservative versus liberal. We're talking about democracy versus tyranny. And um, so it's time to organize. It's time to, to have a nonviolent movement that really makes this world and our country and our society what we need it to be and what we want it to be and what we've envisioned it to be. So yeah, I do. I go out, uh, and I was in, like you say, at, at uh, Standing Rock uh, for uh, almost three weeks. Um, and then uh, I'm going out next, uh, next for, the, for the inauguration for, for several days to be a part of some Street protests and other other uh, uh, acts of nonviolent civil disobedience to to say no to this incoming regime. So here we are um, again with community television. Uh, that is a not, it's, this is non corporate. This is <laughs> for the community, by the community, mm -hmm. of the community. Uh, you're going to be uh, a host of uh, of. Uh, you're one of our one of our hosts on this show, mm -hmm. and uh, wh what do you see as the potential for you know? Uh, well, for what the, we're doing. The, the word you use, community. I mean, here we are in a community television station. But uh, and 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 to extrapolate that out, I think that's where everything has to start. I think the 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 the, the world we want is 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 built through real community. You and I knowing one another. You and I creating a better way forward in this community, being honest about what's working and not working. Um, and, then, and then art. I mean, this is a, one of the reasons that I tell stories is that um, art reaches down underneath the facts and, and, and gets to a level in us, if it's done well, that makes us really care enough to make these changes. So there's a, a definite role for, for everyone in it and, and, and certainly for art. And so the community aspect of this, you know, um, uh, here, here in, uh, in in the Monterey Bay area, I, I think is just you know it's, it's limitless what we can do. I, I'm encouraged for California because it has already an appetite for for making the world uh, a, a little bit different than the rest of the country. Oftentimes, leading the way in environmental uh, justice, and and there's so much more to go. And certainly, there's so much more to go in California as well. So here we are. Yeah. And then we're talking about. Uh, uh, Let's go back to golf for a second. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I agree with you on that, and and I must say, uh, you're someone that has a beautiful game, a game that I'm very envious of, a game that I'd love to have, and uh, but um, and and one of the things that uh, will be known to a lot of our viewers is that uh, Rancho Cañada just closed down, right. which was an affordable. Uh, place to play for, for locals. For, yeah. for locals, and and coming from Aspen, uh, where, where you just came from, where they had a way for locals to play, 
kind of what, what do you, what do you, tell me what you were just telling me before right. we started rolling. You bet. Well, you know, to be clear, I, lo I love, I mean, I think Pebble Beach is hollowed ground as a golfer that grew up playing the game from eight years old. So I'm, yeah. I'm all for Pebble Beach. Yeah. And, and, but it's a big ticket item. Yeah. And most folk can't afford it. And I would like to see that change. I'd like to see it, it be where a certain number of tee times were reserved for folk that are local, that are affordable, for example. But you, you switch over then to Rancho Cañada, which really ramps up that concern for me. And that is, uh, it's a great two courses out there, great courses, very affordable for folk that worked here to play, that support this community, uh, that, that pay their hard-earned money to play around the golf and enjoy an afternoon out in the sun, this beautiful weather and these beautiful golf we've got here. And now that's gone. And so where is the for Carmel and Pebble Beach, the the affordable municipal golf course. I mean, to me, uh, it's a travesty. It needs to have one. We need to step up. And so maybe I'll end up at some city council meetings, at least, uh, you know, making my voice heard. And and who knows where to go from there. But I think we need a very affordable municipal golf. Course. See, on, on political issues. You never know here, but on golf, <laughs> I, 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 I think you can. Uh, I think you can be a successful advocate here. Well, see, golf is politics too. Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. You know? So, yeah. yeah, but but then just to enjoy the game. I mean, I think um, here's something I'll say about golf, and it, it relating to my art and to my activism. I used to be a business guy. It's great. I mean, we're inside the system there, and if we're people of conscience, we're trying to make it better from within. That's a tough road to hoe. I've been in there. It's hard to change those cultures to make them actually more just. Uh, as I stepped back out and kind of pushed from the outside, well, that's what I'm doing these days with my art and my activism. But all of that is so hard if you really do it in earnest. Um, you need something to enjoy, whatever it is. I mean, you need something that's just fun. It can be anything, tiddlywinks, hiking, etc. I like hiking, but I love golf. So... Yeah, for me it's golf, and yeah, see on the course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know? and uh, yeah, it's. Uh, but 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 tell me about what Aspen did because I think that's interesting. Okay, yes. Well, uh, you know, some of these communities that are kind of known to be uh, resort oriented, like Aspen, and certainly Pebble Beach would qualify as that. But Aspen out there, they have uh, gone a long way with with uh, employ affordable employee housing, but also affordable golf for locals. If you put in a private club out there, uh, you have to have uh, 10 rounds a year that are available if you're a local to the, to the local at the price of the, of the municipal golf course green fee. So uh, I know that's true at Vail as well. It, so it's yeah. some way to begin to balance that out to where mm -hmm. the people that actually live there and make the community work uh, day to day have a place to enjoy these wonderful golf courses. And... Uh, you know, golf was started at St. Andrews by a bunch of friars kicking, a, 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 hitting with a stick, a, 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 a little rocks into rabbit holes. But as it's gone along, and I went back and I played there last year with my son as a great outing. But I love what they do. It's still owned by the municipality. If you live there, I think you pay for pay five or ten pounds to play the 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 the, the, the arguably the greatest golf course on earth, certainly where the soul of golf resides, and yet they keep it for the people. There's a way to do this where everybody gets to play, and I think, I think Carmel needs to step up on that. Yeah, I do. Pacific Grove is great. Oh my God, Pacific Grove has it. See, I'm I'm a I'm a Lynx member at Pacific Grove. I, I I have that. I love the people at Pacific Grove Golf Course and very friendly. That's the right atmosphere. The problem is, it's just it's one course here. I yeah. mean, you know, we need we need each you know certainly the leading communities should. Uh, it, it, uh, Pebble with golf. I'm talking about with golf with Pebble Beach and and, uh, and and Carmel should should have that. But yay for Pacific Grove. I love the Pacific Grove golf course. It is truly they they call it the poor man's Pebble Beach. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's a fun, sweet course to play. It really is. Now, I guess we better get back to your book and get a little business done. So, okay. so, so, so what, what, how, how have you been out there marketing this? What's the experience? What's 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 going on? And where do people find this? Well, we're about, you can get it on uh, Amazon or at Barnes and Noble. But we're going to also distribute this book beginning uh, in early February uh, to independent bookstores, and uh, hopefully, I'll be doing a book tour, etc. And uh, 
On the 16th of this month, uh, Kirkus Reviews is doing a feature story on me as, as their featured author, and so you folk can go to Kirkus, which I'm very, very proud of because Kirkus is one of the, the most esteemed literary critic uh, publications in the world. So uh, getting a, uh, you know, they've already given me a favorable re review, but this is a feature story on me in the book. But we're going to distribute it through independent bookstores, and uh, and and so hopefully there'll be something at Pilgrim's Way, and maybe something over at the bookstore and uh, other local bookstores, such as the ones in you know in Monterey and PG. Uh, um, uh, but but uh, yeah, really beginning in February, that's when the indie bookstores will kick in. So this is very exciting. Oh, it is. It's fun. It's yeah, fun and to and, and uh, just uh, uh, just to kind of do uh, wind this down. Uh, you found very quickly a, a, a nice creative community here. So how's, how's that experience kind of settling in here? Well, it's, it, you know, Carmel, the way I like to say it is the, 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 the physical setting of nature, of this coastline, and that uh, it, it's going to override any garbage you bring to it and make you into an artist. I, I don't care if you're... I think everyone's an artist, just whether they're actively, consciously pursuing it. But however tied up you are, if you come and walk that beach just for a bit, you're going to start to open up. And Carmel does this, and it has this. It was founded by artists for that reason back in the day, and it still has that center. Now, sure, a lot of other things have grown up around it that, that are kind of noise against that. Nonetheless, that's so powerful here that there is this wonderful, vibrant community for creation and creative people, and they're they're here, and you find each other as we've made friends quickly. I mean, I've been to other communities. I've been here over a year now, but we're moving into our second year. But I've been to places that, in a year plus, you're still trying to make your first friend or two. Uh, here, I've actually found a really nice community of of friends. Most of them have an artistic endeavor that they're pursuing. Yeah. Yeah. So the the artistic life that was so key, especially in, in uh, you know, because you're, uh, you know, the, 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 we cover the whole peninsula here, but you're specifically in Carmel, and that, right. sp that specific artistic uh, uh, heritage there, it's still alive and well. It is. It is. It's, it's interesting, because there's that quote of John Steinbeck from Travels with Charlie in the Carmel Bakery about, you know, what those bohemian artists that founded the community would now be kicked out. By me. Yeah. <laughs> but so we can't let that happen. Well, we're still here. So anyway, <laughs> uh, I'm Mark Bear. Um, I'm with King Grossman. You're watching the Your Town Television program. King's going to be a future host, and uh, you're going to uh, get to know him, and uh, you'll appreciate him like I do. And the man does have a beautiful golf swing. I, I am very <laughs> envious. <laughs> well, the pressure's on. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll take his money because I get high-handed hip strokes. <laughs> All right. <laughs>